Hello everyone. I hope everyone is having a great day, whether you are five hours away or a day away. Remember, I love you. Let's get this started. Lizzo and her controversy with showing her ass in a big t-shirt. I don't care. I don't care. It's her body. She can do what she wants. But of course, people on Twitter are in an uproar because they hate fat bodies. And it's as simple as that. They hate fat bodies and they especially hate black women. And what's so funny is the same group of people who are so into black girl magic and doing whatever we want are all of a sudden disgusted when this is a fat black woman doing whatever she wants with her body and her sexuality. And it just shows that people only like black women who are attractive or fit into a certain look and it's like you don't love black women you love black women that you deem fuckable and people have been comparing Lizzo's image to Nicki Minaj's image Megan Thee Stallion's images Beyonce's image her recent image was her modeling her Ivy Park clothing line and she showed her ass like she was wearing a one piece that said Ivy Park and she showed her big badonka donk and her cool braids um, with beads that had Ivy Park. Let me just tell you something. Beyonce's braiders, whoever does her hair, they are elite. She has the best hairstyles. Like of all time, Beyonce has the best hairstyles. And people were comparing those images and saying, what's the difference? We know the difference. They are thin. They are conventionally thick. They aren't fat. So basically black men are saying, well, they get my dick hard. So basically it's okay. But if you don't get my dick hard, you don't get to do whatever you want with your body, which is a very rapey thing to say, to say the least, basically that you expect women you find attractive to show their bodies, to basically be naked so you can lust after them. And then women who you don't find attractive, they can't do whatever they want. They have to be sex they have to be dowdy and that also applies to rape culture in a way where basically women that you deem unattractive don't have any sexual agency they can't do what they want they have to wait for the approval of men for them to decide whether it is okay for them to be sexual or not and it's the same thing with women who are conventionally attractive where men expect them to be sexual men expect them to do things for them that they may not want to do and this brings me to my point in the last video where this man kept making comments about how virginal I appeared and that I was innocent but yeah he still expected me to have sex with him he still expected me to dance on him he still expected me to do things with him just because he found me attractive just because he wanted me sexually and that was the whole thing where there's no such thing as a whore versus whole dichotomy or whore versus virgin dichotomy because if men see that you are sexually inexperienced and you've never had sex with a man before they look at you as territory they see you as a conquest they see you as something to sexually violate to take away that purity that they see in you just to call you a whore like everyone else men put these labels on women just so they can control us so there is no such thing as a virgin there is no such thing as a virgin because when you are a virgin men expect you to fuck them when you are a so-called whore men expect you to fuck them there's no such thing okay they are going to get it regardless of your sexual status regardless of how many days you wait to have sex i read this story where this woman was seeing a guy who was in a relationship and I don't believe that she knew but she waited for a long time because she wanted to see if he was the right person for her and he allowed her to wait and he made her think that he was worth it and when they finally had sex he ended up leaving her because he wasn't willing to commit because he loved his partner so much yet he went out of his way to flirt with her to string her along to make her think that they could wait to see if he was committed to her or not but his whole end game was to just fuck her and that just shows how trash men are by suggesting that women are only able to do things with their bodies if men say so if men give them the okay and that's exactly why Megan Thee Stallion made that comment and said you want me to be a hoe so bad 
but I've only slept with a few men. And I feel like as problematic as that was, and it was horrorphobic, I don't think Megan meant to be horrorphobic in a malicious way. She was being horrorphobic, but I think what she was saying was men want you to be a hoe. Men want you to be sexually experienced. Men want you to do things that are sexual because all they think about is fucking you so it's like they're hoping that Megan as attractive as she is as conventional her body type is they hope that she is a hoe and they keep saying that she fucks all these men because these men fantasize about fucking her so it is a projection and as someone mentioned her being a dick black woman from the south it's like they put so much pressure on us to be sexual and to also be pure and angelic at the same time so I don't really fault Megan for saying that but I really think that she really needs to evaluate how her comments can be harmful to sex workers especially when her whole aesthetic is fucking men with money her whole aesthetic is men giving her money in exchange for sex like that that's definitely whole culture that's definitely sex work culture i know a lot of sex workers and they feel that megan is very harmful to them in that regard where she keeps arguing that she's not a hoe which is a slur for black sex workers and whore is a slur for sex workers in general and megan keeps saying that she's not a hoe and that's that'd be like a white person saying you think because I talk this way that I'm talking like a nigger, you know, and that's essentially what Megan is doing. Like, she, yes, no one wants to be called a slur, but basically she just does not want to be associated with the idea of what a hoe is. So I want Megan to kind of look at this and say, you know, while I don't want to be degraded for my body, like this is a real experience for women who are in sex work. And I don't want to try to distance myself from that to further stigmatize those women. But back to the whole Lizzo convos, it's always been this way for Lizzo. Lizzo is a very talented black woman. I think that she's a great singer. I prefer her singing songs more so than her rapping. I listened to Coconut Butter, I, I believe that was her EP back in 2016. And I wasn't really impressed because I was just expecting a singer singer and she was more so rapping than singing and I was just kind of like and like her raps kind of leave little to desire but I really do love her voice and I've always supported her because of her aesthetic and her image and her being an inspiration for fat girls especially fat black girls and she's always been body positive. People say that Lizzo doesn't make black music or music for black women. That's not true. Lizzo has always been about pro-blackness. Lizzo has always been about power for black women, especially thick and fat black women. And to act as if she's all lives mattering things just because she says, hey, my music is for everyone. They can enjoy it. If they want to feel good, they can feel good. I think it's disingenuous. If you don't like Lizzo's music, if you don't really like how she presents herself, that's okay. But then for you to make up stuff about Lizzo and to say that she's a coon or she's an Uncle Tom or she makes music for white women when she can't help that white women tokenize her because she's a fat black woman and they fetishize that. They fetishize her confidence. They fetishize her blackness. They fetishize her fatness. She can't help that she has a lot of white fans. Just like Cardi B can't help it that she has a lot of white fans who look at her as a safe black latina woman because she is lighter skin and they kind of look at her as someone that isn't completely black but black enough where they can feel as if they aren't racist because they like her or offset another migos they're not responsible just because they have white fans so i really wish people would stop putting the responsibility onto lizzo that was why when Ari Lennox made that comment about how she makes black music and she couldn't believe that she lost out to a Soul Train Music Award to Lizzo, it kind of came off as shady. Like, And when people were throwing shade at Lizzo in defense of Ari Lennox, Ari sat back and did not say anything. All she did was whine and complain about how people pick on her. And what kind of annoys me about Ari is that her whole aesthetic is that Shea Butter girl look and act like her album is literally called Shea Butter Baby right and it's a great album but I feel like she plays up this whole I'm a peaceful nice Afrocentric girl who doesn't mean any harm and she has this very soft-spoken voice and she's itty bitty like she's a small girl 
And because of that, people kind of look at her in a way that they look at Janae Eichel, even though she is dark skinned, even though she does have 4C hair. It's kind of like they kind of look at both her and Janae in a similar way where it's like, even if they are being shady, even if they are saying some things that are harmful, people look past that because they look at their exterior and they think that they are harmless or nice girls or they seem like it. And it's not to throw shade at anyone because I do love Ari Lennox's music. I do love Janae Eichel's music. I do love Lizelle's music. But we have to honestly evaluate how some of these women speak of Lizzo and a lot of these women on Twitter who are usually experts on colorism who are experts on desirability politics and how beauty standards have affected black women suddenly just don't understand why throwing shade at Lizzo is so problematic especially when these are thin black women of all shades that are coming for Lizzo and a lot of women who I wouldn't even expect to be so hell-bent on throwing shade at Lizzo are doing that but yet they are fans of Cardi B who has literally called girls darker than her roaches and that was deliberate you can say well it's New York slang but for Cardi B to be as light as she is and for her to call girls my color or even darker roaches that was clearly color loaded this was clearly loaded in the fact that they had brown or darker skin this was loaded in the fact that Cardi saw herself as Latina or a non-black mestiz Latina that she was IDing as for you know some time separating herself from other black women or other Afro Latinas and her looking at her very beige skin tone and believing that she was above these other black women who had a brown or darker complexion to their skin and you can say well she was saying that in general but she specifically used that word towards visibly black girls with brown and dark skin that was no accident and you can say cardi has learned from that but for you to be a cardi fan and then to suddenly not like lizzo but yeah you're constantly talking about how men don't want you because you're dark skin or because you have 4c hair or because you are a visibly black woman that just shows that you only care about male gays and their desirability because you can't even stand up for fat women like Lizzo because you have an issue that she's more popular than your faves and you don't see that as possible because she is fat and you expect her to be in the background and to be singing sad R&B songs as if she were Kelly Price and I enjoy Kelly Price's music but I'm calling you know I'm calling it what it is I'm calling it what it is But that's what I have for today. I hope everyone has a great day.